Hello there and welcome back. My name is Photios and this is the Game Court. Today I'm doing a video without Elena and this is because we're doing a top 10 of uh, solo games. It's not necessarily solo only games, that are games that can be played solo as well sometimes. And uh, for this particular video I have selected 10 games for you and uh, generally speaking my idea of uh, a good solo game is that it has a win or lose condition, so it's not like beat your own score type of thing, but also it's easy to set up and it's relatively fast to play, maybe up to 45 minutes to one hour. And while there are games in our collection that can be played solo, like for instance Gaia Project or Carnegie have great solo modes, I don't tend to play this game solo because particularly Especially we play these games with Elena and we enjoy it this way, so why would I play them solo? At number 10, the game I have for you is uh, the game here, Newton, by Nestor Manone and uh, Simone Luciane. And this is a game that can be played, the box says, in 90 minutes, but if you play solo, it plays basically in 45 to 60 minutes. It's published by Cranio Games and it's for 1 to 4 players, so, so not strictly a solo game, but it's one of the games that uh, Elena doesn't enjoy as much. Even if I have tried to play it with her so many times, she never really enjoyed it. So it, it has stayed in our collection because I really fancy the game and it has a very good solo mode because basically it's a multiplayer solitaire. Now, it's not really within as this aspect of win-lose condition, so you have to beat your own score, sort of, but still it's a very nice, satisfying experience. You play over six rounds and uh, slowly, slowly you build your engine because at the end of every round you tack a card on the bottom of the deck of the player board and then this makes your, uh, your particular action more powerful. You can uh, do some research in the development track, you can travel around Europe, you can take income. There are cool stuff you can do in this game. You can build your library and uh, you can also upgrade your initial cards, initial action cards to even better action cards by, by doing some study. And generally speaking, it's a very, very nice, satisfying game. Time is a very big component of this game because you have to do everything timely because you have some nice combos, but to make the combos work, you have to be very careful with the timing of the combos. For instance, when you deploy your scientists and uh, this scientist gives you a benefit, which you have to take at that moment, and if you're not prepared to take that benefit, then it will go to waste. At number nine, it's a game that I don't really have a physical copy of it because it's basically a print and play game. It's called uh, Voyages. Voyages is a game uh, designed by Matthew Dunstant and uh, Rolly Maldon and published by Postmark Games. To the best of my knowledge, it was the first of its kind, the sort of, you know, uh, pay three pounds or whatever the cost is and get the PDF file that you can print at your own, at, at your own printer. And then basically it's a roll and write game. It works multiplayer, absolutely. Actually, it can go, it can play with many players, up to a hundred, says the website, but generally you can play with as many players as you want. And all you need, each player needs to have one piece of paper and three dice. Three dice is common across all, play, all players, so you roll the three dice, and two of them are used to navigate your ship around the map, and basically one is the direction, because you have six directions, because everything is hex placed, and the other one is uh, for speed, so two are used for traveling, and the rest, the rest die is used for something else usually, depending on which uh, adventure you are playing, because there are several maps in this uh, Voyages game. It's a very nice game, it, it plays very well solo. Again, it's kind of beat your own score, so again, it doesn't have really a win or lose condition. To win, you have to have three stars, three accomplishments, whereas if you don't, you lose by the end of the game, but still, yet again, you try to beat your own score. It's a very nice game, it plays very fast, so solo, I think it plays in about 10, maybe 15 minutes maximum, not more than that. It's uh, very easy to also take for travel, if you want to, let's say, if you're traveling by plane or something like that, it is just a piece of paper and three dice, very easy to play, and it's very highly recommended. At number eight, we have uh, Siberian, which is the latest addition to the Oniverse uh, games, and uh, it's really a solo play, a solo game, even if uh, the box says one to two players, it's really uh, a solo game, and this game plays in about 30 minutes, and uh, what you do in this game, you're trying basically to fix your machine using your five different types of robots, and you can use uh, robots of uh, particular uh, types to fix a machine, or particular uh, number to fix a machine, or you can even upgrade your robots. So in this game you have a deck of robots, and there are five different types of robots, 
and uh, you can use robots to repair your machine. Each machine requires a particular uh, set of uh, set collection of uh, robots to be repaired, either these of a particular type or particular numbers. But also you can uh, upgrade your robots. So when you discard the robots to do particular stuff, you can do cool stuff like take discount on upgrading machines or drawing even more cards. It's a very nice game, very small game. A lot of hand management in this game. You go through the deck of robots twice, unless, I mean, if you manage to build, to fix the machine up until then, all good. If you don't, then basically you're out of time and you lose the game. At number seven, we have uh, another yet new game. It's uh, called Welcome to Reckoning, and it's a game designed by Michael Heeman. And it's a very, very small game, as you can see here, which is basically a deck of cards. And uh, what you do in this game, it's a bit Wild Wild West situation, but also a bit of uh, fantasy where you have to save the village uh, because some buildings may catch fire or may tentacles may attack the buildings. So you have to save the buildings because the buildings give you nice abilities. And basically you win the game by completing a poker hand of a four of a kind. So the cards are sort of uh, multi-use, so they have some abilities and some events, and as you have the cards, as you keep some cards, you, you try to acquire a four of a kind. The next game in our list, at the number six, we have uh, Ukiyo, and this is a 2020 game, and it's another micro game. It's uh, just 18 cards. It's a game designed by Ian Walton. I think he is based in the UK, if I'm not mistaken. And in this game, you have 18 cards, and these cards have different symbols, have six symbols each. It could be flowers, it could be butterflies, cranes, or acorns. And what you do, you do, you go through a set of challenges, and each challenge uh, you have to basically keep a few cards aside. Each card, apart from the six symbols, has also a rule. So let's say you keep, you keep two cards aside, and the rule is you have to have, by the end of the game, four butterflies in a row, or you have to have, uh, let's say, not more than uh, five acorns visible. So this could be two of the rules. So that's the rules, that's the two cards that you set aside, and then you shuffle the other cards, and one by one you uh, draw them, and you try to build a six by six area that uh, basically fulfills the conditions by the end of the game. And uh, there are many challenges that you can accomplish, and the challenges can become harder and harder with more conditions and more rules. And it's a very satisfying little puzzle. It just takes five minutes to play, maybe even not, maybe three minutes to play. Again, very portable if you want to play on plane or anything like that. So that's uh, Ukiyo, a 2020 game. At number five, we have Ancient Realm, and this is another micro game, another 18 cards game, plus another six cards, I think, the expansion or maybe something like that. I think the six or nine cards expansion. Uh, this is uh, from the uh, Buttonsai collection and is uh, one of the few Buttonsai collections that I have uh, kept in my collection, in my uh, board game collection. And this is designed by Steven Aramini. And this is basically a micro-civilization game. You have some people there that you need to hire to do some stuff for you, but you also try to build some buildings or uh, build the wonders. Uh, and as you progress through the game to get the resources, you have to basically cover other cards to get the resources from these cards or to activate them if you wish. While you also manage to, you also try to manage your resources. You have uh, wood, you have stone, and you also have your money. It could be wild. You can spend money instead of uh, resources. But uh, yet again, at the end of the game, you try to have the highest score possible, like the most uh, glorious uh, civilization uh, possible. At number four, we have uh, Friday, and this is a solo game, a deck building game designed by Friedman Fries. It was published in 2011 by 2F Spiel. 2F Spiel is the company that publishes Friedman Fries games, basically. And in this solo game, all you have is a deck of cards and some uh, wooden resources which represent uh, food some uh, life tokens. This is why this is life tokens. And uh, you start with a very young uh, uh, Friday, a very young castaway, and you try to make them more experienced. Uh, as, they, as you progress through the game, you try to over, uh, overcome some challenges, to complete some challenges, which uh, basically, if you, flip a, if you complete a challenge, you're going to take the card, orient the other way around, and it becomes a new card in your deck, a more powerful card while at the same time you try to get rid of the older cards, because some of them are even minus power, so you want to get rid of them by spending some life tokens. And uh, as you progress through the game, you want to complete all the challenges, and then at the end of the game you also want to uh, counter-attack challenge the pirates. It's a very small game, 
very satisfying as well, quite difficult to beat, at least in the beginning, once you find the system it becomes a bit more easy, but uh, that's our number 4, Friday. At number 3 we have uh, Legacy of You, this is another 2023 game, it is designed by Sam Phillips and is part of the ancient anthology or ancient series of Garfield games, in the same series we have uh, Adrian's Wall or Raiders of Scythia, and this game is a solo only game, and it is a campaign style of game. So what you do here, you try to build the canal uh, before the flood is, uh, is, is happening, but also you try to, uh, to kill the barbarians that are attacking the village. Uh, it's a lot of uh, multi-use cards, a lot of resource management. If you are familiar with Garfield games, it has some elements from uh, Garfield games. It's, uh, it takes about an hour to complete, but, but it's very easy to set up. And the cool thing about this game is uh, if you win or if you lose, then the game adjusts the difficulty accordingly. So if you lose a, a, a scenario, then the next, the next game becomes a bit easier by adding some more cards. Or if you win a scenario, then the next game becomes a bit harder. And uh, the campaign finishes if you have either 7 wins or 7 losses. So you may play up to 13 games in a campaign, but you can easily reset it and play another campaign and the experience will be slightly different as well. At number two, we have uh, Maki. Maki was originally uh, pre presented to us in 2013 as a print and play game, but then later on was uh, picked up by Sideroom Games and it was actually published in a physical format. So in Maki, you take the role of uh, the Resistance and you try to accomplish different missions against uh, the Nazis and then uh, basically you're trying to avoid patrol and the soldiers while completing different missions. And uh, this takes place in a, in a city in France, and uh, the game in its heart is worker placement, but you try to place your workers strategically so that you can uh, take the stuff that you want or complete the mission that you want, while at the same time they can uh, find a way back to your base, because if they're captured by patrol, they will be killed and they're out of the game, basically. It's a, not a very easy game, it's a quite challenging game, but the production is very nice, you even have a dual layer main board, you have nice components, nice tokens, you can upgrade the rooms to have even better rooms that you can accommodate based on the mission you are taken. Overall, it's a, it's a very, very nice game. Again, quite small box, highly recommend it. It's not very easy to find here in the UK, but uh, if you do stumble across it, I, I, I really recommend it. At last, at number one, we have uh, my favorite solo game, that's uh, Under Falling Skies. And again, this game started as a 9-card print-and-play, free print-and-play game, designed by Thomas uh, Ulrich, but then it was picked up by uh, Czech Games Edition, CGE Games, and it was published in a physical format, you can see here, and uh, the it's a, a much bigger game now, it has a campaign mode, and uh, all the cool stuff. Now, this game is basically Space Invaders, the board game. So you have the mothership, imagine Independence Day, that the mothership is there, and small spaceships are coming down to attack your city, and you have to do some stuff in your city. Basically, you are excavating under the city, you have different rooms that do different stuff, so you can attack these uh, small spaceships that are coming down, you can uh, do some research to basically kill the mothership, or you can uh, create some robots, you can do some further excavation to explore further cooler rooms under the earth. Uh, and the cool thing about this game, you have five columns, five uh, uh, roads, basically the spaceships are coming down, and you have to assign your five dice on each column, so one dice on each column, but the pip value that you assign on each column is basically the strength that you're taking that action, but it's also how many spaces the small spaceship is going, come, is, co is going to come towards your city to attack the city. So you have to have a balance there, because a high pip value die can be both a good thing and a bad thing. And as I said, there's a campaign in this game, there's a lot of variability, you can uh, increase or decrease the difficulty as you fancy. I think it's a very, very cool game. It takes about 30 minutes to play, maybe 20 to 30 minutes to play, not more than that. Um, and it's uh, highly replayable, highly resettable. And for its price, I think it's un unbeatable. It, for me, is the definition of a good solid solo game, easy to set up, fast to play, clear win or lose condition. So I'm not sure what else to ask. So that's uh, Under Falling Skies by CGE. So that was my uh, top 10 solo games. 
I would be very interested to hear your best solo experiences, either there are solo only games or there are games that you enjoy solo, more solo than you know playing multiplayer or whatever that is. There are other games that I have played solo but they didn't stream a collection, such as uh, Witchcraft, which is uh, like Resist with exc exclamation mark, more or less a similar system, but I didn't really uh, click with the system, so it didn't really stay with me. Um, but uh, I'm really curious to see and uh, experiment with other solo games. I don't predominantly play solo, predominantly I play with Elena or with other players, but uh, you know, maybe 5% of my games are played solo, of my sessions played solo, so I'm uh, interested to see what other solo designs are out there that, I, that are worth exploring. So let me know down, down the comments what are your best solo games, and uh, until next time, thanks so much for watching, and see you later!